Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl from Nulungu. Welcome to another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to fear and hope. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Hey, People normally feel as soon as they feel spiritually enlightened that's the type of connection they feel to Allah Azawajal. but one of the things that happens in the process of all this is that a person's Iman goes very high and as the Iman is going very high it just doesn't remain balanced it's all out of sync so one day it's extremely high and the next day it falls so low that you're like what happened to me because you did something wrong right that is something that most many young people go through as they feel spiritually enlightened. But that balance, it takes time for that balance to come. Where your peaks don't become really high, every time you fall, it's not like a, like a ditch that you're falling into, right? It's not like that this is the end of the world, you've committed some really, really horrendous sin that uh, after this, you might not ever be able to get up and continue on anymore, right? In order for us to truly have faith, and in order for that faith to be continuous, not a faith, faith that ends up leading us to despairing in the mercy of God, and not a faith that ends up leading us to no longer fearing the wrath of God, we have to have two key com components, okay? Each of these components have to be there. We have to have hope, and we have to also have fear as well. Sometimes when you talk to people and you give them all of the things that Allah says that is supposed to naturally lead human beings towards the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, people say, you know what, cut it out, please just give us something, some of the Rahmah as well, right? Don't you know that Allah is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim? We, we know that. Similarly, sometimes when you talk too much of the hope, it can have a, a, a wrong effect as well. Remember, both of these keys, hope and fear in Allah Azza wa Jal, they are like two wings of a bird and the bird is that bird of faith if a person has both fear and both hope then that bird will continue to fly and that iman will continue to prevail and Allah's messenger وسلم, said even before that that iman belief is between fear and between hope the moment the fear becomes too much that's the moment we're going to start despairing from the mercy of God and the moment we start thinking about the mercies too much so much so that we even try to overlook our shortcomings, then we're going to continue to commit those shortcomings. So perhaps a person is hearing or a teacher is teaching too much about hope, or a person wishes to take for himself too much of the hope of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that ends up leading him to forgetting that, that there is also the wrath of Allah. If Allah is Ar-Rahman, Allah is the ever merciful, then Allah is also Shadeedul Iqab. When you have both of these, then you have, then you have the correct the potion, if you please, of faith, right? Let me give you an example here. The example is the example of a land in which a person has seeds and they want to plant these seeds into the land. So when you take these seeds and you plant them into the land, and you know that this land happens to be a very ripe land. You know it's a very friendly land. You know the so soil is just right. There is a possibility that you may not as well. Something may go wrong, a natural disaster, a landslide. Something may go wrong, obviously, right? But you've taken all the means, you've planted the seeds, you've ensured the soil is right, you've ensured that the water is just given right, you've ensured that there's a farmer there to look after the crop in, in case there happens to be any problems that need to be looked after, right? Now, you can actually hope that six months later or one year later, depending on the plant that you're trying to grow, you're actually going to have a good plant that you can ha harvest, right? However, if you didn't take all those means, you notice that there's all these different insects that are going to eat this plant, you use no pesticides or no other means to cure this, and you use no, not enough water for you to be able to irrigate this land, and you didn't make sure that the, that the soil is right, 
and you didn't make sure that the seeds are actually right as well, then obviously you're going to not have hope, you're going to have a false hope, right? So they said that the same is the example of your faith as well. For Allah has made your heart like a land. And in this land, Allah has already given you some seeds already. And that is the seed that you wake up with. And that is the, that's the seed of Al-Iman, of faith. Because when we wake up into the world, when we come out of the bellies of our mothers, we are already granted the seed of faith. And that seed of faith needs to be irrigated. Allah's Prophet ﷺ, he said, every single child is born upon the innate nature. And then Allah's Messenger said, then his parents, they end up leading him to Judaism, or they lead him to Christianity, or they lead him, lead him to uh, some other faiths and so forth, right? Essentially, the, the seed of faith has already been, been planted within you. And Allah talked about this in the Quran as well. And the soul, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected and shaped and formed the soul, and Allah is the one who did ilham. Through intuition, He led the soul to know what is good and what is evil. And the Messenger told us of this in another hadith as well, that Allah has made a path. In front of the path, there's a collar. On top of the path, there's a collar as well. On the two sides of the path, there happens to be walls. These walls have doors and the doors have shades. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the path is the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. The walls are the boundaries of Allah Azza wa Jal. The doors happen to be those doors that if you go into it, then you are going into the outside of the boundaries of Allah, i.e. you're going to be committing sins. On top of the path, there is a caller calling you and telling you don't go in those doors because those are not doors that are going to go to the right path, go and continue on the path because that is the path of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said that collar on the top of the path, he happens to be the collar of Allah. In the heart of every single believer, you're about to commit a sin, already your heart is telling you don't do it. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, go and ask your heart. Now if you deafen yourself to a degree that your heart can't even be heard anymore, then you don't ask your heart, you ask other people. Sometimes when a person is about to commit a sin, you're looking at something that is impermissible. Perhaps you're drinking something that is not allowed. Perhaps you're in a situation you're not supposed to be in. You're with a girl or you're with a guy that you're not supposed to be with, and especially in that sort of scenario and that sort of way. And perhaps you're conversing with someone that you know that this conversation, if it was heard by other people, it would be understood wrong. And there's something within your heart that's telling you this is just not right. Even though you ended up going to some shaykh and you found a fatwa and you justified your situation and your heart keeps telling you this is wrong. If you continue to feed it pills to destroy its instincts, then that's it. The admonisher is gone. So there's a seed and that's the seed of faith. And then there's a heart and that, that heart happens to be, that heart happens to be the field in which you're going to plant the seed. So you place the seed into the field. And then the more deeds you do, the more goodness you do within your life, the more charity you give, the more you smile at people, the more you're kind to people, the more you say good things. So when you start irrigating that heart, and then the tree of faith will come. And Allah spoke about this tree in the Quran as well. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, the example of a pure word, is the example of a pure tree that has its roots well established within the ground and its branches tower within the heavens. And what's the result of the branches tower, towering within the hev heavens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the result is it grants its fruits at every single moment and every single opportunity by the leave of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So when you have your branches towering within the heavens, meaning you've irrigated your plant so strong that it has now taken root into a, an entire tree, and now it's become a tree that has a strong trunk, it's going to have branches that are towering within the sky, and that is going to give shade to people. That is going to give fruits to people. That is going to give vegetation to people. Allah said, at every single opportunity it gives its fruits. Because the person who has a big tree of faith, people become touched by that person. Every single time they greet them, they feel that they've left a mark on their lives. 
every single time that they just speak to them, they speak with wisdom because Allah opens their tongue up with wisdom. So when you have this tree of faith, then you can actually have raja. Then you can have hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. So you have to take the means, the seed, all the necessary tools Allah has given you. He's given you limbs to worship Him. And if you don't have the limbs to worship Him, He's given you so many different avenues to worship Him. Whatever your situation is, within that you have to ensure that your tree of faith is growing. If your tree of faith grows, then you have a reason to be hopeful in Allah Azza wa Jal. If your tree of faith is not growing, then you don't have a reason to be hopeful in Allah. Islam is not all comfortable by the way. It's supposed to make you strive. It's supposed to be difficult as well. So it's supposed to be a warning as well that's gonna make you feel bad internally. That's how you wake up. There's ease as well. You need to be reminded of that if your, your fear is going out of balance, right? In Surah Al-Kahf, Allah also told of a person, right? Who had this garden. And he, he, he was looking at this garden, he thought that as, when I re return back to Allah Azza wa I will be given something even greater. But in reality, the Prophet ﷺ told us that a smart person. The truly intellectual person is who ends up humbling himself. Humbling his desires and his soul and his self to submission before whatever comes his direction and his way. If it's hard upon him, he'll take the hardship. If it's easy for him, then it will be like bread with some nice cream cheese and a lot of honey, right? It'll taste really nice. Irrigating the tree of faith, so your faith grows. A truly intellectual person is the one who submits his desires and he does action simply for whatever happens to be in the hereafter and in the afterlife. And a person who's unable is a person who follows all of his desires and then he has all these false hopes upon Allah Azza wa Jal. So the smart person is the one who realizes that the seed of faith is already within his heart and that the heart is like a farm, is like land, is like land that a person can use to irrigate and to farm and so on and so forth. And that when he ends up doing the righteous deeds, he's irrigating that land. And once he irrigates that land, the seed of faith will become the tree of faith. But the person who's not so smart is the person who follows all of his desires. He doesn't irrigate that land. He ends up putting all sorts of evil things within that land, which is his heart. And then he hopes from Allah Azza wa Jal that perhaps on the Day of Judgment, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will grant me something. That definitely is not the right way to go and that definitely is an unable person. That person is not considered a capable person. So have good thoughts with Allah Azza wa Jal. But have the balance of having fear of Allah Azza wa Jal as well. And if you read the Quran by the way, you'll get a little bit of both. You'll get fear and you'll get hope. Allah will talk about hellfire and Allah will talk about Jannah alike. Allah will talk about what's going to happen with the evil people and Allah will also talk about what's going to happen with the good people as well. All of those will be mentioned in a very very fluent way and on a very regular basis. This will be throughout the Quran. Why? Because Allah said Allah's book is what? It is a book in which Allah places, places the opposites, the criterion for the evil and the good. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you an equal dosage of both, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because of that, the skins of people who believe in Allah, they end up becoming goosebumped, right? So if you're getting a balance of both in this life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow your tree of faith to grow properly, right? The more you have a disbalance in either one of these, the more you will not be on the right path. Some people think fear is going to lead them to Jannah. It will, if all they do is sins. Because fear is a cure then. And some people think that hope is going to lead them to Jannah. It will, if all they, they've been doing is, they do need the faith if they've now become despaired from the mercy of Allah Azza If you get to the state of disparity where you no longer feel you can actually prevail and you can actually get to Jannah then you need hope but when you get disparity also from the other angle then you need to have some fear to help you right as well 
Umar ibn Khattab being given the great, glad tiding of Jannah, he was still fearful that he is from a Mr. Munafiqeen, right? And that's why he came to one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he asked him, he said, O oh Hudayfa, do you think that I am a Mr. the hypocrites? How can such a person be asking that whilst he's already been granted the glad tiding of Al-Jannah? Because he's actually become complete in his faith where that hope that he had been granted didn't lead him to what? Didn't lead him to becoming secure of the, of the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet ﷺ is sitting there and suddenly comes a, on comes a cloud and the Prophet ﷺ's face changes. And when he looked at his cloud, he knew better than you and I that his ummah is not going to be destroyed by an azab. But Aisha said to the Prophet ﷺ, and some of the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, that why does your face change when you see this cloud? He said, don't you know that they were a group of people historically who had been destroyed by a cloud? And they said, this is just a cloud that is coming before us. It's going to give us rain, that's all it's doing. The Prophet knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah is not going to punish them and you are amiss them and Allah will not punish them if they are seeking forgiveness from Allah azza wa jal. Even then he's feeling afraid of the cloud. And that's because when you see the ayat which lead you to hope, they shouldn't let you lose the balance and you forget the fear. And when you see the ayat of fear, you shouldn't let the so much so that you have now despaired from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is Ar-Rahman and Allah is Ar-Rahim. And Allah is at the same time Al-Jabbar. You have to have a balance of these thoughts, right? Should we have more fear or should we have more hope? That's a very important question. A balance of both is perfect faith. So, so, but some people are driven by hope. Why? Because there is a disbalance perhaps in terms of fear within their hearts. So to run away from that, they need a little bit of hope in order for them to, in order for their skills to be balanced, so they're able to drive right. And other people is the totally, totally exact opposite. They have too much hope. So if you give them more, what's going to happen? Their faith is going to be totally out of sync. They will start committing sins, uh, left, right, center. Uh, if not today, probably a few decades later, they may, they may start distorting the words of God to try to continue to live their hopeful life when they, when they finally realize that there's also fear involved as well. So you have to look at each scenario in a different way. So the answer is not a yes, fear is better or hope is better. It's, it depends on the scenario that you're in. But one thing is for sure, the general theme within young people is that fear is better for them. Now one may say, no, fear is going to drive them away from Allah Azza wa Jal. We say, it will irritate them. And that irritation is good. Why? Because if you give too much hope at a young point, the desires are just too strong. But as you grow older, the hope is more necessary as well. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, that don't let any of you die, except that he has good thoughts with Allah Azza wa Jal. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaykum. ورحمة الله وبركاته Very very interesting um, message I'm looking at fear in terms of we should fear God because God is in control of everything including our lives and he decides our fate I'm looking at fear also in terms of doing good or bad. We've got a choice to fear God. We've got a choice to um. We've got a choice to choose between the good and the evil of this world and what we want to partake in. Exactly. When it comes to hope, sometimes you can only hope that you're doing the right things in life and according to God. And the video says you have to balance the two for you to have faith. Have faith that God is there for you in each and everything. Have faith that with every step that you take, God is with you throughout the way. Sometimes balance is not easy to reach, but you have to learn to reach your balance. It takes one step at a time. You just can't balance everything all at once. You're going to have troubles, you're going to have struggles, all sorts of things along the way but learn to balance fear and hope and
see where it takes you have the faith that it's leading you to a greater um point let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video